Hey everyone, I hope everyone having a very good day and enjoying all of your uh, talks and workshops. So as uh, C mentioned, we'll be talking about the uh, future of conversational AI today. And uh, uh, we kind of try to understand like uh, what it holds for us in the near future and uh, how we can utilize this opportunity or a shift in, we can say, a paradigm, what we have witnessed, especially in the last couple of years. So we'll try to see what exactly is the fuss about, right? So with this, uh, my agenda is to answer a couple of questions and uh, try to understand it better. So the first one is a simple, like, from where we are coming, so what has happened in the last decade, and uh, what were some uh, milestones that we achieved, and uh, where we are heading, where we will be in the next 10 years, and uh, what we can expect as a developer, or as a marketing person, or as a business person. It depends, right? For each of us, now this conversational AI and is going to hold a significance much, much greater than what it has been so far. And we'll try to take a look at what is going to be the business outlook as well, because that is the money is the most important thing after all for businesses and all. So we'll take a look what it is going to look like in the near future. And uh, as I said, we'll also try to understand parallelly what does this mean for each of us together, right? So. Before we uh, start with that, let's try to understand what is conversational AI and uh, why is it so important, right? So uh, conversational AI in the past, where uh, we are coming from, we normally see a very simple kind of interfaces where we are given options to choose from a uh, uh, couple of already preset options. Uh, like facts and all that, you might have interacted with a lot of banking websites. They will have their uh, chatbots and all on their website. You get option to interact with that, but that is not a conversational yeah, website. Say, that's it's just a mere chatbot which is offering you answer to a couple of questions based on some keyword uh, search and keyword matching, right? So, but going forward and uh, specifically in the last uh, couple of years, we have seen a great deal of enhancement with large language models. So we'll try to see that uh, what or uh, you know, what the conversational AI is going to do for us. And uh, it is important, right? Because not just any one industry, but uh, across all the industries, whether it is a healthcare, customer support, manufacturing, so earlier when machine learning and all uh, started to become the hype, even before that, the people were not paying any attention as to how it can uh, you know, benefit us across uh, all the industries, specifically if I talk about manufacturing industries, there people were so you know, uh, confused about how it can add value or unlock value, but uh, with the more enhancements, more compute power coming through, all the NVIDIA GPUs, we, we have been lately seeing that a lot of enhancements can be done and, and a lot can be achieved using uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, right? So we'll try to take a look. So uh, starting from that, so as I said, so right, we were just basic chatbots which were previously available and a couple of very uh, milestones that we saw in the industry as Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant, these all came one by one, and uh, it kind of started to reshape quite early. And these were a couple of examples which kind of gave us a glimpse into the future as to what these can help us with and what is possible using these uh, technologies if we use it very carefully, if we use it uh, well, what it can allow us to do. And uh, of course, the challenges. Uh, we can't forget the challenges. And uh, in developing all of this, right, even if we talk, uh, we talk today, right, like Siri, 
people are very critical about it alexa google assistant they are improved they have improved quite a bit but still they are not quite there where we can say that they are truly a conversational ai truly helpful in every aspects right so and these the problems with these have been the challenges which we have been facing continuously and uh, specifically the data com data quality complexity personalization and trust so each of these we will try to see that what these challenges exactly means so if if we want to progress further in the conversational ai we have to look at this five pillars of conversational ai and we need to understand that uh, each of these whenever we are trying to build a solution we have to see uh, we have to objectively see that whether we have the quality amount of data what is the complexity of the solution if we can offer personalization or uh, the people whether this solution can be trusted with it or not and very important aspect is the creativity that whether this any any machine learning solution of specifically if it's a conversational ai let's talk about humor right so humor or any kind of uh, uh, creative responses which we which any of the voice assistants currently lack of that so they are not able to either understand our humor correctly or respond in a much uh, humorous way rather right so uh, if let me uh, talk about these in a little bit of more detail so if you talk about data right so uh, the all the llms development that has happened in the past 2 3 years that has happened because of the vast amount of data that has been fed to these machine learning algorithms which are uh, you know uh, transformers usually which have been uh, scaled up quite significantly but to be honest that is not the right solution if we look at from the perspective of commercialization from a long term solution because it needs quite a lot of compute resources for us to even uh, run a very simple uh, for a very simple solution or a very simple uh, product right so if the cost doesn't come down and it, it doesn't have to come down by just uh, you know by uh, reducing the cost of compute but also the sizes of these uh, llms or large language models which we have been seeing which are basically in hundreds of gbs and you need uh, hundreds of gbs of rams to run that and very expensive gpus like a100 which are uh, on the upwards of 10000 dollars and more uh, right so unless and until uh, we find a way for the conversational ai or these models to learn from the data and uh, and to learn it actively right if we because what ha we have seen so far is that we feed the data and uh, it kind of performs uh, with that data in a certain way and whatever new data that comes in it is kind of oblivious to that but that has slightly uh, uh, started to change with uh, recent a lot of research uh, has been coming up like uh, rag right uh, so uh, a lot of advancements are come but uh, this is not quite there yet and as i said this the current solution which we have is not actually the right solution we need to build a much better solution so that uh, we can reduce the amount of data that we need to feed to uh, these uh, during the training times and all that right so it is very important and if we talk about complexity right so uh, as, I, as i was saying like uh, especially the with the natural language right so whenever we speak uh, each of us has uh, separate preferences or their own way of talking their own way of using uh, humor right and uh, this has been one of the biggest challenges of conversational ai that uh, whatever we have built so far they kind of fail to understand uh, these nuances of our language natural language and uh, natural language has been one of the biggest uh, areas to crack right uh, that's why uh, it took so much time for us to even reach here because 
Normally, machine learning, we have been using uh, way back from 1990s, right? So we have been using that, and we have been using in the back end for so long. And we have achieved quite great results. Finance institutions have been using machine learning-based algorithms. Some funds are completely managed by machine learning algorithms from so long, actually, by now. BlackRock, though, recently has uh, uh, launched their one of the, I would say, world leading, uh, their fund completely managed by AI. So more and more, uh, you know, this machine learning is getting used in the back end. But if we talk about the role of the conversational AI and all of this, right, uh, I would say that is the last mile connection. Whatever we are using in the back end, we need it to connect to the person who is going to use that product. If we are not able to communicate all of our advancements, all of our solutions, all of our uh, knowledge to the end mile user, then all of it fails basically, right? And for that, we uh, certainly need to work on the complexity part of this. And uh, if we talk about uh, next very important aspect is of personalization. So currently, we all the products which uh, which are out there. Uh, so, uh, you know, specifically, uh, if I talk about uh, Europe, uh, there are GDPR compliances which uh, companies needs to follow, right? So, what happens with that is that uh, companies cannot collect data for uh, of users, and uh, if you do not have the necessary data for uh, providing custom inferences or custom insights for the person or the business or the product that which you are using, then uh, it kind of is going to slightly diminish in value, right? So personalization is equally important. And we are, we are going to have to, uh, you know, uh, resolve these issues and resolve uh, basically uh, so that uh, we can provide better we have to build better AI solutions, uh, specifically that we can, uh, you know, trust with our data that has, and for that, as I was saying, right, so uh, for that, the data will need to be come down, the amount of data that needs to be fed in order for us to be able to achieve that kind of uh, utility. And uh, unless we do that, but all of the following personalization trust is going to suffer. Uh, because of the lack of data, which uh, we usually cannot uh, directly feed into this because of obvious concerns, uh, privacy concerns. We cannot feed all the data directly to any uh, uh, model or large language model which are out there, and uh, anyone else can access that and probably hack that and get uh, some data out of that, right? So that is also their creativity, uh, as I talked about, right? So humor and all that basically same thing so all of these all of these are very important aspects which are the key factors whenever we try to build a solution we have to look at them very very objectively whether we have the data whether we can uh, you know address the complexity whether we can provide personalized solution to the users whether the user is capable of trusting the solutions and whether we can provide or interact with the end user in a much more creative way, right? So let's, let's took a, we, we kind of tried to understand what uh, the conversational AI kind of, uh, what we will need to develop a proper conversational AI for our products, for our businesses, but what does, or what is the size of the business is going to look like uh, in the upcoming years, right? So let's try to uh, uh, check out some numbers as well. So AI is, conversational AI specifically, uh, is going to grow at a CAGR of 22%, which is a huge uh, growth number for, uh, for the industry. This is, even though this is a part of the AI industry, uh, still this is, uh, going to be quite big in nature. Currently, we have uh, $10 billion as of uh, 2023, but uh, by 2028, it is going to reach $30 billion, which is quite huge. 
and uh, even uh, after that uh, it's going to grow even uh, much more accelerated way as we bring down the compute cost, as we bring down the necessity of us to feed as huge amount of data as we have been feeding uh, to our models, right? So this is going to grow much, much further. And it has to also trickle down, right? It has to trickle down to our day-to-day -day life uses. And uh, lately, we have so much boom of uh, IoT devices and all that. So it has to trickle down to even a smaller devices like these in order to be completely useful. And uh, so these numbers are going to grow quite rapidly. And uh, we already, uh, uh, I think most of you would be aware of who are the key, key market players in this. Uh, though some uh, startups and all that are doing a really good job of, uh, so recently many of you might have come across Rabbit AI uh, trying to, give us a solution where uh, we can uh, directly interact rather than having to go through each of the apps. We can directly interact with the phone and uh, it gives you a complete end-to-end -end solution rather than just uh, responding, which currently like Siri, Alexa, Google Assistant does. So feel free to check out actually Rabbit AI. That was quite, quite impressive. But it needs to be seen. Uh, it is still yet to come in the user's hand. So it needs to be seen how effective that is going to be. But that is what the point is. That is what the future is going to look like. So we, will, we are going to have a smaller devices in which these capabilities are going to be there. Some capabilities are still will need to be there in the cloud. But uh, it has to trickle down into these smaller devices so that it can make or uh, provide useful insights or uh, enhance our day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day activities as we go on. And uh, so the biggest markets here, uh, you know, this is also kind of obvious from the key market players, if you would see that uh, North America is currently uh, the biggest uh, uh, player in this uh, conversational AI domain, uh, though other countries are also trying, but these, all the major players are currently from these places. But this is going to distribute, uh, because, especially because of the open sources. All the models are open source now. Anyone can uh, use that. Anyone can uh, retrain that, fine tune that. Even a lot of open data has been placed as well. So this is also kind of going to get a little bit more democratic in nature. So that's a good news for us. So yeah. And uh, currently, so. These numbers I want you to take up with a grain of salt because these numbers are going to change very rapidly and uh, it may change in the next six months itself, right? So uh, what are the top five industries currently benefiting uh, from conversational AI? And uh, uh, so like real estate, travel, education, healthcare, finances. So uh, you can notice, right? So finance, usually you would see that a lot of chatbots and all that integration has been done, but it is, it is still not yet benefiting from it, right? Uh, because uh, still uh, the nature of the, those chatbots are very basic in nature, where uh, they are just providing you facts and answers. You cannot uh, ask that chatbot to give you answers like any answers about your transaction, any answer about uh, what is your balance or any kind of investment advices they cannot provide you. And that is the future of the conversational AI, that there are going to be personal, so if you talk about finance sector, there are going to be finance advisors, virtual finance advisors, which can give you finance advices. So assume, assume a future where uh, you bring out your phone and you directly ask that what a stock uh, is currently, uh, looks good to invest for me, right? Uh, let's say in finance sector or in health sector, in whichever sector you, you ask this finance advisor, it will give you a bunch of a stock by analyzing its performances, market uh, insights, and uh, that, that is what uh, the future should look like, right? Uh, for a convers proper conversational AI to be able to, to be useful, not just uh, being there to answer a couple of uh, keyword-based uh, questions and answers, right? So similarly, but these numbers are, can change very drastically. Uh, as I said, so, and uh, this is a quick uh, look at how many number of chatbots there are currently being used by each of the countries. And this tells you the fact, right, that uh, uh, this is not, uh, uh, these chatbots are not 
very uh, impressive in nature as of now but they are going to be replaced by the much more and much more intuitive much more knowledgeable chatbots much more conversational chatbots and uh, this is where right uh, we can uh, so let's let's move forward and uh, so we'll kind of uh, you know uh, the growth of what we were talking right across industries uh, what is what is going to be uh, the conversational uh, uses of conversational ai across healthcare finance and all that right so for healthcare ai driven chatbots for medical queries which can answer your queries even before you go to the hospital right retail and e-commerce virtual shopping assistants uh, even mantra has already integrated uh, if many of you might have seen that finance as i was saying virtual finance advisors customer support uh, so at the moment we have a lot of people directly uh, giving or uh, you uh, call a call center or you call any businesses their people picks up the call and uh, they do that right but it is going to be replaced by ai powered chatbots or ai powered uh, directly conversational ai as well right so and education also has been uh, on the rise of benefiting from this quite a lot uh, specifically in terms of giving you a uh, personalized track personalized learning apps which can adjust according to your pace according to your uh, knowledgeability all that right so the role so the role is the same thing basically what what is going to be how is it going to look like in the near future right uh, so uh, currently the biggest thing is that all these conversational ais are not capable of uh, uh, understanding a lot of different kinds of inputs at the same time which is going to change and which is changing actually and uh, uh, if it multimodal has already been integrated but it's still not up to that level yet where we can uh, say that it is uh, completely fluent in conversation and all that and emotional intelligence is still not there yet it's uh, there is a complete lack of it which needs to become if we want or the products needs to be uh, well uh, uh, you know mass uh, uh, utilized by people right and integration with iot as i was saying that it it has to trickle down to smaller and smaller devices for us to be uh, very uh, you know for it to be very productive and useful for us so uh, again the challenges which we were talking about privacy and uh, ethical consideration are one of the biggest uh, currently challenges which uh, is uh, concerned for all these big large language models which you are currently seeing in the market right uh, they they have been fed a lot of data and uh, some of their uh, if you provide some of your data as well they take it take that and learn from that as well so you have to be very careful in how you interact with these large language models so that you do not provide any personal information otherwise that can become quite public in nature so you have to be very careful with that as well and uh, we have to ensure uh, uh, you know uh, unbiased ai so uh, it can be about races it can be about uh, a lot of different things right it has to be completely unbiased and uh, integration with already existing systems is a big challenge at the moment we have a lot of different products we have a lot of different industries across which if uh, it has to be uh, integrated it's going to be a little bit of challenges because uh, the data which it needs to consume whether that is there or not uh, whether that's quality or not so all of that are quite a bit of challenge so again uh, currently uh, all the large language models so specifically if you talk about chat gpt right uh, they have uh, uh, there is what is called uh, rhlf which is uh, basically a human in the loop basically and uh, we have to kind of continue that uh, because we cannot trust all of these yet uh, so uh, constant human oversight is much much needed and uh, basically uh, yeah so that's that's pretty much it uh, what uh, the conversational ai future is going to look like so we talked about uh, the five pillars of conversational ai that we need to focus when whenever we are trying to develop a solution all the benefits and opportunities what the conversational ais are going to bring to us and uh, in terms of for uh, even for developers or for businesses right and uh, all of these uh, challenges and all we can solve it only through collaboration and innovation uh, if if we did not uh, you know 
get all these open source models and all that, uh, the progress would have been much, much slower than this. So, yeah.